this is probably going to be the, and I'm going to say this at this table, the most pro-black president that we've had in our lifetime because, and I try to, you know, analyze the people that I encounter. This president actually wants to prove something to our community, our faith-based community and our ethnic community. The last president didn't feel like he had to. You just heard from Pastor Daryl Scott of Ohio, who praised the president during a meeting on prison reform earlier this week. And during that meeting, the president recommended more prison work programs and more partnerships with businesses to help ex-convicts get back on their feet once they're released. Take a listen. Prisoners have never, ever, even close done better than they've done now when they get out because they're getting jobs. And the reason it's hard to get people because we're pretty well filled up. So for the first time, probably, I think I could say ever, they're getting a break. And I have to tell you, the people that are hiring prisoners, and you've heard me say it, they're loving them. And I don't mean in every case, but in a big percentage of cases, they're loving Very nice moments with the president. She joins us via telephone. Thanks so much for being here. Alveda is also the director of civil rights for the Unborn for Priest for Life. And like I said, she was sitting right next to President Trump, right on his left side. Great to have you, Ms. King. I'm so glad to join you, and I'm founder of Alveda King Ministries and a yes. Newsmax blogger. And you I've are. That is right. You are a Newsmax. For a while. I love it. So oh. I love Such an important fact. Part of the Newsmax family, yes. <laughs> so, so honored to have you. And we also have with us Pastor Daryl Scott, whom you heard praising President Trump as the most pro-black president in our lifetimes. Now, Pastor Scott is also the CEO of the National Diversity Coalition for the president. Great honor. I served with him also as a surrogate uh, for the president's campaign. I want to ask you, though, Pastor, I can't resist. This was a very bold statement for you to make, the most pro-black president ever. I know some people would take great exception with you on that, so I want to give you a chance to say why you would make such a bold proclamation. Well, you know, Gina, I, I, I'm a very shy person, and you know that. <laughs> Alveda knows how shy I really am. And so for me to say that... I'm not saying <laughs> just, a word. I'm not saying a word. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about it. Listen, I was born during Eisenhower's administration. I've been through Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, uh, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump. 12 presidents. Sure. I've never seen one that is as outspoken regarding um, pro African American initiatives, one who is as outspoken and proactive that is really trying to engage in different activities that are targeted specifically for the black community. We have our huge urban revitalization initiative that we're doing. Jared is working very, very hard on prison reform. He just gave a thumbs up to a prison sentencing reform bill where they're trying to uh, over, uh, uh, enhance criminal justice and have criminal justice reform. And he wants to do so many things that are targeted specifically for our community. And I just couldn't remember any other president in my lifetime having done so. Yeah, so and, and John, yeah. And, and to add to that, of course, the record low unemployment for low varying groups of minorities, yeah. including blacks. But I agree. I have to agree with uh, with Pastor Scott. Now, Aveda, I've got a question for you. One of the oh, things wait, that... wait, 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 wait. I want to jump in on that. Please do. I'm a, few, I'm a few years older than Pastor Darrell, and he's <laughs> right. And you remember when President Trump said, Pastor Scott, he said, uh, black people, I want you to vote for me. And he said it very humbly and honestly. And then he says, because... What do you have to lose? Well, everybody got mad. And I said, well, Mr. President, we know what we have to lose. Well, he wasn't the president then. Uh, Mr. Trump, we know what we have to lose. What do we have to gain? He says, I tell you what, we all believe the same. If you give everybody a fair chance at a job, or somewhere to live, take care of their family, safety, and security, then we'll, even, we'll overcome racism. That was his answer to mm. racism. And yeah. the day he went in there, he just, he's been doing so many. I didn't know what an EO was. Pastor Darrell had to tell me executive <laughs> order. I didn't know what that was. But there are so many EOs that support that. President Trump, uh, as Pastor Darrell is saying, is putting his money where his mouth is. Now, that's inflammatory, Pastor Darrell. You know that. That's very inflammatory. And I would say, let us take the more excellent way and be peaceful about this. But I also agree with you, tell the truth and shame the devil. You know, Alveda, I have to ask you about something. I want to talk about the death penalty and something Pope Francis said. But there was a moment between you and the president at the, yeah. at the uh, event yesterday 
where you sort of patted him on the arm and he patted you on the arm. You know, body language doesn't lie, Alveda. There's a genuine affinity, a genuine friendship between you and the president. Just briefly tell us when and how that developed. It's been going on for a long time, and I think he knew I was trying not to lose my temper because we knew that the fake news was lurking in, in the wings. And um, I think he was assuring me, we're okay, we got this. And I, I, I felt like that. And then I was there to assure him, we're here for you. But that has happened many times. Because I, not only do I admire the president, his wife, First Lady Melania Trump, is a very uh, brave and beautiful woman. And usually when I go to see anything where they are, I take something to them. And I, this time I took one of my holiday because I was glad to say Merry Christmas again. So I, I gave them that for their holiday time. But I just, um, just every time we're around each other, and uh, Mrs. Trump had those beautiful tears right after he became president uh, at there at the cathedral uh, there in, in, in D.C. And I, I've been very close to their family, their children. I met some of their children on the uh, campaign trail. I did a lot of work there through the National diversity coalition with uh, Pastor Darrell and Bruce Lavelle and everybody. So it's been ongoing. It's not new. I, right. I just wanted to say that. No, it was and a really, really nice moment. Op. It's not yeah. a photo op. It's not a photo op. Yeah. No, we, we could clearly right. see they that, did. and it was just a real nice moment. We were talking about it here after the show. All right, let's talk a little bit about the death penalty. Now, Pope Francis declared today that the Catholic Church considers it unacceptable in all cases, every case. Pope added that the church will now work to eliminate the death penalty worldwide. Pope Francis is the first pope in the history of the Catholic Church to condemn it outright, and the death penalty is currently outlawed in most of Europe and South America. So where do your, where do your organizations stand? Pastor Darrell, first you, and then Alveda, love to know where you stand on this as well. well. We use as a biblical basis for our support of the death penalty, Genesis chapter 9, verse 6 which states, uh, the man is shed blood, by man shall his blood be shed. And that word shed actually means uh, unwarrantedly and willfully. In other words, it refers to cold-blooded murder or mm -hmm. premeditated murder at that. Uh, I believe the death penalty is applicable in some cases. Uh, I think the American justice system and the criminal justice system has to be synchronized to the extent that we do not execute innocent people. But the death penalty, you know, for those that commit heinous crimes and that is no doubt that they have committed these heinous murders, I think that the uh, death penalty is applicable. The reason given to Genesis 9-6, it says, for in the image of God made he man. And when you murder someone, you cut off their posterity, you eliminate their heritage from this earth, and you, um, uh, you mar that image of God that man was created in. So in certain instances, the death penalty, I believe, is applicable. Alveda, same question. Well, you know, I'm an evangelist, too, and I can agree with Pastor Darrell on those points. I have a little caveat. Now, you know, I work for a group, uh, Priest for Life. I'm director of Civil Rights for yes. the Unborn there and founder of Alveda King Ministries as an evangelist. And my uncle, Martin King Jr., our whole family, peace-loving, uh, taking peace instead of even war and all of that. But God hates the shedding of innocence blood, as Pastor Darrell just said, innocent blood. And so in times of war, although war is never ideal, and if we can use the six steps of nonviolent conflict uh, reconciliation, mm -hmm. we won't even have to have these wars. But uh, when there has to be some type of punishment, the only caveat I would give there, once someone is dead, you cannot evangelize them. You cannot get them to the love of Christ. So I, I feel as though every effort should be even made to those people on death row. There are a lot of people on death row that don't belong on death row, too. And that's mm -hmm. our a prison reform, re prison reentry, and all that. We have to examine all those points as well. So it's not a, even, it's a cut and dry answer, but uh, you got the, the Bible from Pastor Darrell, and I'm giving you that as well. But we want to reach everyone with the love of God wherever we can. But innocent babies, should not be executed in the womb, I tell you that. Not yes, totally and you've been a fierce it. warrior on that topic, yeah. Alvita. We appreciate both of you yeah, so much for much. joining us today. Thank you both, and God bless you both. Thanks God for bless you too, God. God bless. Thanks again. Coming, Coming up. up, yep, we sent our very own Bo Deedle out on the streets of New York City to find out what's on your mind. We're going to show you that right after the break.